Okay, so now we'll talk about uh, simplicial approximations. Uh, and it has to do with the idea of approximating, um, you know, continuous maps, if you will. It's like uh, by some sort of uh, analog of uh, a simplicial map, okay? Simplicial approximations. So, um, and, and the basic idea behind this is that uh, we're going to think of the star of um, the, the ver of a vertex, if you will, it's like in a simplicial complex, as being something like the neighborhood um, of um, that vertex. It's like, and, and then it's like, think of it as an open set, if you will. So we want to be able to think of the vertex star as an open set. If you prefer, you should think of it as a neighborhood around a vertex. Okay, so let uh, N of a vertex U be the union over um, sigma, which is in the star of U. Okay, and then I'm going to take the union of the interiors of sigma. Okay, all right, so let K and L now be simplicial complexes. So, um, so we want to say something about a, a continuous map um, um, from the underlying space of K to the underlying space of L, right? So a continuous map uh, let's call it G from the underlying space of K to the underlying space of L, right? Satisfies the star condition. If the image of a vertex star is contained uh, in a vertex star, oh, a vertex star in K, I guess, right? It's contained in <coughs> a vertex star in L. Okay, so what this means is that that for all um, u, it's like in the vertices of k, right? There exists a vertex in the vertex set of L such that g applied to um, n of u. Let me just write this in the next line. All right, so G applied to N of U is contained in the neighborhood or vertex star of V. Okay, so there always exists this V. Uh, and, and so here there's no necessity, if you will, that this V is unique. Uh, it, you know, if you, if you somehow have a, a small enough mesh, it's like on K, you could imagine that uh, it maps to two neighborhoods. Uh, um, or two different, it's like vertex stars, it's like associated different vertices. Okay, so, so note that uh, V uh, need not be unique. Okay, um, all right. So in any case, it's like there is such a V and it always exists. Uh, and so you, you can just pick one, okay? Um, so we're going to use, you know, whatever choice, whatever arbitrary choice you've chosen for that V, it's like um, as long as you've uh, done this for all the use, then you can, of course, it's like construct now a, a vertex map, okay, which maps vertices to vertices. Okay, so we use this to, to construct a vertex map. OK, 
Okay, so uh, phi from the vertices of k to the vertices of l, okay, and uh, you assign it in the obvious way that uh, phi of u is equal to v, where v is the, the thing you've picked above, right? And again, it, it can be any one of those uh, which satisfies this condition, uh, but you just choose one. Okay, um, which again exists uh, because of your star condition. And then, uh, and then one can check. that uh, this actually maps uh, vertices of the simplices in K to vertices of simplices in L, right? Which is to say that it actually is a vertex map. But I'm not going to belabor that. Okay, all right, so, so what happens then, of course, is that if you have a vertex map, as we talked about before, this induces a simplicial map. So this induces a simplicial map. Let's call it F from K to L, okay. And then this map is uh, what we call a um, simplicial approximation. It's like off the map G. Okay. So this map <coughs> F. K to L is a simplicial approximation. Of uh, the continuous map G. Okay, uh, and namely that means that uh, if you take G applied to a vertex star of a point of a vertex in L, sorry, in K, right? This will be contained in the vertex star of uh, F applied to that vertex. Okay. And this is true for, um, for you, it's like in the vertices of K. Okay. All right. So uh, with that in mind, it's like then uh, the basic idea is that uh, there is what is called the simplicial approximation theorem, which says that given any one of these continuous maps, it's like you can basically refine um, the um, simplicial complex K enough that you can always construct a simplicial approximation of that continuous map. So this is the simplicial approximation here. Okay, so if uh, G is a map from the underlying space of K to the underlying space of L and it's continuous, then there is uh, a sufficiently large integer n such that uh, g has a simplicial approximation uh, once you've suitably refined uh, the uh, simplicial complex. Okay, so it's F is a map from the nth barycentric subdivision of K to L. 
All right, so let me try to prove that for you now. Um, Okay, so the proof um, sort of relies on uh, compactness, right? So you cover K with uh, basically open sets, okay? Which are the pre-image, it's like of the uh, vertex stars of vertices uh, in L, okay? So G inverse N uh, V for all V which are in the vertices of L, Okay, so clearly that covers this. Okay, so since uh, the underlying space K is compact, right, there's a finite subcover. There is a finite open subcover. Okay, and, uh, and in particular then, um, you can find um, a sort of a diameter which is small enough but still greater than zero such that um, um, basically any set of diameter less than uh, this lambda is contained in one of these sets in the finite subcover. Okay, so um, and there exists some lambda greater than zero, such that any set with diameter less than equal to lambda, right, is contained in one of the open sets in the uh, finite subcover. subcover. Okay, all right, now we're almost done. So let n uh, be large enough that the mesh size of this, uh, that the mesh size of the nth barycentric subdivision of k uh, be less than lambda over 2. Okay, so if that's true, then the diameter of the star of, um, of any vertex is going to be less than lambda, which is just two times that, right? Then that means that the diameter of star u is less than lambda for all u in the vertex set of k. Okay, but uh, we've always we've already chosen lambda such that if you have a set with diameter less than lambda, right, then it's fully contained in one of the um, these open sets. Okay, so this implies that uh, STU the star of U is contained in G inverse the vertex star of some point V. Right, for some v in the vertex set of L. Okay, so therefore it satisfies the star condition. And then uh, by the argument we had before, uh, since this map satisfies the star condition, there is now some simplicial approximation, right? Okay, so that's uh, a proof of that theorem. Again, it's like basically what that means is that if you have any continuous map, it's like then you can approximate it uh, by some sort of simplicial approximation. Um, once you've refined uh, um, that uh, initial complex well enough. So, so let me just stop here for now.